This video is about the inertial electrostatic confinement method of nuclear fusion. The most common type of this is called the farnsworth hirsch fuser. The video in particular is about a new method of doing this and a new method of configuring the reactor. If you don't know the basics of how this method works, then I would suggest reviewing some of the videos I've linked in the top right of the screen before viewing this one. I would like to start by looking at some of the issues with current fusers. One of the most important and biggest of these is the low fuel ion target density in the center of a machine, and correspondingly, a low density of ions accelerated onto this target. These low densities result in poor energy generation. The reason for this low density is the difficulty in containing the plasma ions. State-of-the-art ion traps, called the Penning and Pauling traps, can only contain about 10 to the 17 ions per cubic meter. And the incoming accelerated ion density is usually much less than this. Since the reaction rate is equal to sigma Na Nb times V, this only corresponds to power densities of a few tens of watts per cubic meter for a deuterium-tritium reaction. Unfortunately, the metal grid ion traps that are actually used in most fuser designs have a much lower ion density than the Paul or Penning types, and so the situation is even worse. A second big issue with current fuser designs is the recirculation of accelerated ions through the machine. Because the density of ions at the center is so low, most accelerated ions pass straight through without fusing. These ions are slowed down and recirculated through the center again by the grids around the machine periphery. However, although these ions, in theory, can give up their kinetic energy to the grids as they slow down, this process is inefficient, and so energy is inevitably lost in the process, even with good design. Finally, fusion products in most designs are collected and turned into energy through an absorption blanket, usually made of a lithium isotope. Again, this introduces losses into the system, as particles are absorbed by the chamber walls instead, and the non-fusion products thrown out of the main reaction area through scattering or thermal excitation are also lost. I'd like now to suggest a new design of reactor which tries to overcome many of these issues. Let's start with the problem of ion density. Suppose that instead of the ionized fuel rushing around the machine. We start with an unionized solid, liquid, or gas capsule in the center of the machine. This capsule can be vaporized and ionized in one of several different ways, for example, by using an electrical discharge or laser light. But probably the method which makes most sense in the current context is to use a high-energy ion beam, as shown on the screen. The dynamics of this process may very well be important to the machine's operation and can be controlled through a variety of mechanisms, for example by strong electric fields introduced in or around the capsule. Because the capsule is simply an unionized solid, liquid or gas, it can have an extremely high density, many orders of magnitude greater than an ionized plasma. When it is ionized, because of its extremely high density, the ions are extremely unstable and have a tendency to try and explode outwards. They can then be accelerated by high voltage grids. Notice how this is exactly the opposite of a conventional fuser. Instead of trying to squash the repelling ions into the center of a machine, we actually start in the middle and allow the ions to accelerate outwards their mutual repulsion turning a disadvantage into an advantage. This process generates an ion density orders of magnitude greater than that obtainable by trying to trap ions in the middle. Furthermore, as mentioned above, it uses the natural repulsions of the ions to facilitate its action rather than obstructing it. 
The resulting ions are then accelerated through a series of high voltage grids to achieve exactly the right velocity for fusion. The target for these outwardly accelerating ions is situated around the periphery of a machine. Again, this is in the form of a neutral substance. The target can be vaporized and ionized using similar mechanisms to those that we used with a beam source pellet, for example by an ion beam, a laser beam, electric field, or some other means. A good examples of these might be a wire or waveguide present in the middle of a target to facilitate this. Like the situation with a beam source pellet, the timing and dynamics of this ionization may be very important here, and we may have to control this carefully with applied fields. Finally, let's turn to energy collection and reclaim. In most fuser designs, this is a major loss and one of the reasons why a working system would have difficulty in breaking even. However, there are ways of reclaiming energy from charged particles efficiently, although neutrons still have to be captured by a lithium blanket, and this leads us to suppose that aneutronic reactions might be better. These methods can be broken down into AC and DC methods, and these are outlined in video 6 of my series on fuser theory on this channel, which I will link above in the top right. In the AC method, the beam is modulated by passing it through an electromagnetic cavity and then energy is returned by a catcher cavity back to the source at the output of a machine. In the DC version, the energy is reclaimed by a series of collector grids at different staged potentials. This energy reclaim system is placed outside the target, as shown on the diagram on the screen and collects all the energy from both the beam and fuser products and scattered and thermally excited products. None of it is recirculated back through the machine. The beauty of this is that because it catches the energy from all the different types of particles leaving, it can operate at a very high efficiency, allowing almost all the energy to be recycled this idea has been proved in other types of electronic system. The operation of a reactor helps this as the particles are all heading in a consistent direction, at least until they hit the target. In summary, this design of fuser, which might be christened the inverted Fansworth fuser, seems to overcome many of the issues inherent in other fuser designs by inverting the scheme, starting with a beam from the middle and a target on the periphery of a machine. In particular, fuel and therefore energy density and losses are addressed. You can find an animation of the system in the top right corner of this video and a link to a peer-reviewed paper explaining the system in the description below. There are also links in the description below to another peer-reviewed paper which describes the energy capture mechanisms.